Riding the healthy new space wave, there are quite a few startups trying to get a portion of the space launch market. When such a company claims to be developing novel tech, something groundbreaking, hardware that will be fully reusable and game-changing, well, it's reasonable to err on the side of caution and remain a little bit skeptical. Stoke Space, however, is not only claiming this, but actually building and testing hardware according to its claim, and at an amazing pace. Recently, this company successfully conducted an engine test with efficiency similar to the Raptors powering SpaceX's Starship. So, what's special about this? How is Stoke Space following the complex technology path of SpaceX? Is there any chance for them to beat out Elon SpaceX? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Founded in October 2019, Stoke Space is still a relatively new player in the emerging startup landscape. However, Stoke has garnered significant attention for its bold ambitions. Much like SpaceX, Stoke embodies the vibrant energy of a young company, often aiming for goals that other companies wouldn't even consider. From the outset, Stoke Space intended to manufacture a rocket named Nova, featuring two stages that would be completely reusable, with both stages returning to Earth. Oh my goodness, is there any other rocket company out there daring enough to pursue such an ambition from the get-go? Companies like Rocket Lab or even established rocket companies like Blue Origin or ULA typically start by producing and launching partially reusable rockets before progressing to higher achievements. To realize this extremely ambitious goal, Stoke Space took an even more audacious step, culminating in the successful ignition of one of the world's most challenging engines to power the rocket's booster stage. The engine was successfully tested with a two-second ignition on June 5th and is expected to be operational again soon. Andy Lapsa, the company's CEO, said in an interview, data point one is that the engine is still there. He described the world's first fully integrated engine test, which involved going from zero to 350,000 horsepower in half a second, as having a pretty high pucker factor. So what does this engine, dubbed the hardest in the world and lauded by the entire space community, look like? Is it as challenging as SpaceX's Raptor engine? Stoke Space's special engine, named S1E, uses different fuel mixture compared to SpaceX. It utilizes liquid hydrogen instead of liquid methane to combine with liquid oxygen. It's based on the full-flow stage combustion technology, representing a significant advancement in rocket engine design. This technology had previously only been demonstrated by SpaceX's Raptor engine on the Starship rocket. FFSC is not only the most efficient technology for bipropellant chemical rocket engines, but also promises to extend the lifespan of turbines. However, its complexity poses a considerable challenge during development. Applying FFSC to the first stage of a reusable rocket further increases the complexity, requiring advanced engineering and innovation. A full-flow engine attempts to squeeze every possible ounce of performance out of the propellant it consumes. The most powerful and efficient chemical rocket engines must consume huge volumes of propellant in a short time without destroying the launch vehicle they're attached to. To create pressure and spin the pumps that are needed to fuel that propellant into their main combustion chamber, engines often burn a small amount of propellant in a separate gas generator or preburner. Gas generator engines vent that exhaust overboard, reducing efficiency but making for a much simpler design. Stage combustion engines use preburners to create gas that pumps liquid propellant and that exhaust gas is eventually injected into the main combustion chamber. Full flow stage combustion sets itself apart by having two separate pumps and preburners for oxidizer and fuel. Unlike simpler variants of staged combustion, FFSC engines turn all of their propellant into gas before injecting it into the combustion chamber. That hot gas increases the heat of combustion and the pressures inside the combustion chamber, ensuring that virtually all the propellant flows through the engine is combusted and turned into thrust as efficiently as possible. FFSC is exceptionally difficult because of the extra high temperatures and pressure it requires, as well as the need for an oxygen-rich pre-burner and pump. In a high-pressure, hot oxygen environment, virtually anything imaginable, including most metals, will spontaneously combust. Only complex custom-designed alloys can survive those conditions. SpaceX's Raptor, the only FFSC engine that has ever flown, is especially difficult because it's meant to be highly reusable. To be successful, Raptor will have to survive those conditions dozens or even hundreds of times in a row with little to no maintenance in between. Finally, the first engine that Stoke Space attempted to create is a reusable full-flow stage combustion engine powered by methane with 100,000 pounds of thrust, essentially a smaller version of SpaceX's Raptor. However, to be honest, this is not just rocket science. This is a particularly challenging area of the field. 
The fact that a startup rocket company is pursuing the most complex type of engine demonstrates incredible ambition and technical capability, while also highlighting the growing trend towards higher performance and reusability in the space industry. I've been around long enough to know that any rocket development program is hard, even if you make it as simple as possible, Anthony Lapps has said. But this industry is going toward full reusability. To me, that is the inevitable end state. When you start with that North Star, any other direction you take is a diversion. If you start designing anything else, it's not something where you can back into full reusability at any point. It means you'll have to stop and start over to climb the mountain. The words of the company leader are filled with the determination of a bold and ambitious warrior, eager to explore new horizons and ready to change if faced with difficulties. I respect that. I'm confident that they'll grow rapidly with such determination. If you feel the same way, give us a like and subscribe and support us. And of course, this is not the only achievement by Stokes Space. Back in September last year, the company successfully completed a hop test of the second stage at Moses Lake. This is reminiscent of SpaceX's Grasshopper and Starhopper campaigns, serving as an initial step for Stoke to validate the design, thrust vector control, and avionic systems of their rocket. Stoke's booster is otherwise familiar and features a deployable landing legs like SpaceX's Falcon boosters. Lapsa said it will also likely have grid fins. In some ways, the upper stage of Stoke's first rocket is even more ambitious. Powered by hydrogen and oxygen propellant, Stoke has designed a conical capsule-like upper stage with an integral fairing. The upper stage's propulsion is exotic and unique. A large pump will feed propellant up to 30 combustion chambers distributed around the rim of its heat shield. The exhaust coming from those 30 chambers will expand and partially push against the upper stage's equally exotic metallic liquid-cooled heat shield. That expansion against the heat shield improves the efficiency of the upper stage and means that its engine will technically be an aerospike. Stoke has already begun a full-scale version of the upper stage's UFO-like rocket with 15 combustion chambers. Since testing began in the second half of 2022, Stoke has completed dozens of static fires. The startup has made significant progress fabricating and assembling its first full-scale upper stage prototype, tanks, nose cone, heat shield, engine, and all. On February 7th, Stoke also revealed that it's begun testing a crucial component of its full-flow booster engine. All told, it's impossible for them to keep up with the most powerful private rocket company in the world, SpaceX. But Stoke Space is making progress at a remarkable pace and continues to tackle the hardest problems. The startup has also avoided widely publicizing any specific deadlines, instead choosing to let hardware and tangible results speak for themselves. Only time will tell if that approach pays off, but Stoke is off to an exceptionally impressive start in an industry full of impressive rocket startups. More than ever, we're about to have an incredibly promising new player, which can be called a replica of SpaceX. It'll be a time when companies known for their stagnation must reassess everything if they don't want to be overtaken by this rising star. We eagerly anticipate a grand launch of Stoke Space's rocket. Labs have declined to announce a target launch date, but based on historical development programs, if Stoke continues to progress rapidly, the company could fly Nova for the first time in 2026. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.